Pinto was now 25, while Joe was 16. He could communicate with animals, and most of them were his friends. At times, Lilo and Pinto would have to go deep into the jungle to call him home, and would find him seated comfortably with some animals before him. It baffled her, because she didn't even know what Joe would always say to them, that would make them feel so comfortable around him, only to see some people already driving away in a truck, with Joe in chains at the back of the truck. Pinto jumped down all of a sudden and started to run after the truck, screaming Joe's name. Pinto's life changed forever when she lost her home and family. Now she lives in the jungle with her little brother and a clever horse named Lilo. But one day, strangers come and take her brother away. Pinto must use all her jungle skills to find him. Along the way, she uncovers shocking secrets about her past and faces dangers she never imagined. Will Pinto save her brother and discover who she really is? Get ready for a wild adventure that will keep you on the edge of your seat. Pinto was a jungle girl, though she wasn't born in the jungle. Life had taken an unexpected turn for her. Her father had abandoned her and her little brother when their mother died giving birth to him. Their maternal grandmother took them in and raised them. But there wasn't enough money to enroll them in school. When Pinto was 12 and her little brother Joe was just three, they relocated to the jungle with Lilo, Grandma's horse, after Grandma passed away. That day was one of the saddest days of Pinto's life. When Grandma was still alive and building the house in the jungle, she would leave very early with Lilo and little Joe into the jungle, while Pinto would leave for the palace where she worked as a cleaner. Pinto, you should take today off and come help in the jungle, Grandma would always say. But whenever Pinto heard that, she would frown and fold her arms. Why do we need a house in the jungle anyway, when we have a roof here over our heads? Are you planning on relocating to the jungle? Well, count me out because I'm never ever going to stay in that wilderness. Pinto once said to her out of anger, Don't be silly, Pinto. I have told you countless times that it is not safe out here. I have seen it several times in my dreams that we were one day attacked and rendered homeless. That shelter in the jungle was what saved us, Grandma replied with eyes glued to Pinto's. Well, be careful what you wish for, Grandma, because as for me... Nobody is attacking us, Pinto said, walking out on her. Grandma called several times, but Pinto ignored her as she made her way out to the palace for the day's routine, not knowing that the shelter in the jungle would one day become their home. One day, Pinto went to the palace as usual when they started to hear strange sounds coming from the village. The palace was on a hilltop, so one of the guards peeped through one of the windows and discovered that the village was being attacked. Town criers immediately swung into action, and guards trooped into the king's chamber just to protect him and his family. The rest of them were left to defend themselves. Pinto ran as fast as her legs could carry her, following the back door, and then hid in the bushes behind the palace. She was there thinking about Grandma, Joe, and Lilo. For the first time, she now understood the reason Grandma was building the jungle house and the dream she had. She knew they were going to be very safe because Lilo was a very smart horse and could run for hours non-stop. After a few minutes, the men arrived at the palace. Pinto heard their yells, asking the king to provide all the treasures in his possession. One of the armed men even came to the back of the palace, looking around with his finger on the trigger. But Pinto was there, watching him, with her heart almost popping out of her chest, squatting behind a tree and peeping through the bushes, he marched to and fro, and then returned to the palace. Bring out the ancient diamond, Pinto heard one of them say, yelling. I do not have it, the king replied, yelling back. And then something that looked like a little ball landed directly before Pinto in the bush from nowhere. She wanted to pick it up, but paused for a few minutes to see if anyone would come for it. When no one did, she picked it up and discovered that it had a lock with a little key in the keyhole. She twisted the key, unlocking it, and saw something with a ball shape as shiny as the stars in the sky. It was the most beautiful thing she had ever seen in her life. She tore a part of her dress and then wrapped it around it, and found her way home through the bushes after about two hours of being there. But as she approached home, there was a very thick smoke she saw coming from the village. She then found out that the men had burned down the whole village. No! Pinto screamed, running home, but their house had been completely razed. Everywhere was filled with smoke. She called for Grandma, Joe, and Lilo, but found no one, not even their neighbors. 
She ran around the burnt village in search of them with what she found still in her hand, because she had this feeling that they were still alive. Some houses were still burning down, with properties and people in them. Grandma, Pinto called again in tears, and then she started to hear Lilo's voice. She paused, wiped her tears, and turned around. And there the naughty horse was, staring at her from afar. Pinto immediately let out a grin as soon as she saw him and then ran to him. Lilo, where's Grandma? She asked, locking stairs with him, but all he did was twist his neck with an eye. Pinto immediately understood him. Take me to them, she said, and he turned swiftly. Pinto ran after him. They got to Grandma, but she had been burned beyond recognition, even though she was still alive. Joe, however, was fine. Pinto screamed in tears, holding Grandma to her chest. She unwrapped what she had found and then showed it to her. As soon as Lilo saw it, his jaw dropped in awe. Grandma, look. I found it in the bushes behind the palace, Pinto said. Grandma managed to open her eyes and then looked at it. Wow, the ancient treasure. This diamond is over 700 years old. And it's been passed on by the royal family from generation to generation. Listen, Pinto, take your brother and Lilo to the jungle house. It's almost completed, but you guys can stay there. This place isn't safe, Grandma managed to say. Pinto took a look at it again and then at Grandma. You mean this is a diamond? She asked and Grandma gave a nod. Return it, Grandma said and breathed her last breath. Pinto wept, including Joe, her little brother, and Lilo the horse. She had never seen a horse in tears before. Lilo was the first. They left Grandma's corpse there while Joe and Pinto climbed the horse and then they left for the jungle. Pinto was on the horse with tears dripping down her face and with the diamond in her hand staring at it. I'm never going to return this, she muttered to herself. They arrived at the jungle. Pinto climbed down and then carried Joe and they all went into the mud house. To her surprise, Grandma was already gradually setting up the rooms. Pinto hadn't been there since the last time she came, despite Grandma's pleadings to come help her out, which she always declined. Grandma had ended up paying some men in the village who followed her once. Grandma had already put two wooden chairs and a wooden table in the living room with a local lamp and a lighter on it, while one of the two extra rooms had a wooden bed with a mat covering it. Pinto went into the kitchen and found a few plates and cups with spoons. A very old cooker of woods and a drum at the back of the door already filled with water. Wait, was Grandma a seer? Pinto asked herself with a hand under her chin, and then she went back into the living room where Lilo and Joe were already seated. I'm hungry, Joe said, rubbing his stomach and looking into Pinto's eyes. That's where the problem is. I don't even know how we are going to get food, Joe. But come, Pinto said, standing up with a hand stretched forward. Let's go hunt for fruits, she added with a smile. Joe jumped up, and Lilo too. They took a bag from the kitchen, climbed the horse with Joe, and went in search of fruits. They ended up plucking and picking different fruits, which they arrived home with, ate to their fill, and they all slept off there in the living room. Pinto woke up later at night with her mouth agape. Everywhere was dark, with the door still widely open. But thank goodness the moon was there in the sky with its beautiful brightness, but she was still so frightened. She rushed toward the door and then slammed it, but the windows were still open. With the brightness of the moon shining in through the window, she was able to locate the lamp and the lighter still sitting comfortably on the table. She lit the lamp, went toward the windows and then shut them. She carried Joe from the floor into the bedroom where they both lay on the bed. She brought out the diamond, stared at it, and gave it a kiss, holding it so tightly to her chest. The next morning, it was Lilo the horse that woke them up, sniffing the side of their faces. Pinto immediately opened her eyes and started to stretch her body when he started to sniff her face again. Get off, you silly horse, she said with a giggle, pushing him aside. And then Joe too woke up. I'm so hungry, he said as soon as he sat up. Joe never joked with his stomach even when Grandma was alive. Not again, Pinto said to herself, getting off the bed. Let's go pick some fruits, she added, bringing him down from the bed. I don't want fruits, Joe said angrily with folded arms. There's nothing else out here, Joe. We didn't come with any food stuff, so we are just going to manage fruits for now, till I come up with something, Pinto said, staring at him. 
and then Lilo started pushing her from the back using his head. Stop it, Lilo. This is no time for jokes. I know you're hungry too, and so am I, she said, turning swiftly to him. But he still wouldn't stop. He continued pushing her till he pushed her out of the house, and he still didn't stop. Okay, now stop it, she yelled. But he ignored her till he succeeded in pushing her into a large potato farm just a few steps away from the house. Wow, Pinto exclaimed, looking around, and then she discovered something on the ground which was wrapped around the farm. Pinto, see? Grandma's potatoes, Joe said, pointing towards the farm with a grin and wanted to run into it when Pinto screamed. Joe, wait! And he turned swiftly all of a sudden. There were trap wires around it on the ground. Grandma must have put that to protect the farm from animals. Pinto carried Joe up and she asked Lilo to wait for them. Joe and Pinto went into the farm as she crossed those wires, being extra careful. See, I planted this, this and this, Joe said with a grin as soon as Pinto dropped him on the farm, pointing towards the plants. He ran forward again, paused, and then started to scream Pinto's name, pointing at something. Pinto, look, he screamed again. She rushed over to him and saw an animal that was already caught in a trap. It's grandma's, Joe said with a grin again. Well, Pinto squatted, took out the animal, and then went to drop it in their bag and started to harvest some potatoes. Grandma never told Pinto she grew all these, not even once did she mention it to her. To date, Pinto still wondered how Grandma got to know that they would later end up in the jungle, even though she told Pinto she saw it in her dreams, but Pinto still didn't believe that. Pinto carried the bag of potatoes out of the farm, put it on Lilo, and then went back for Joe. They were about marching home when she turned back and saw a monkey running after them from afar. She carried Joe all of a sudden and then let out a very loud scream, Run! They ran as fast as they could into the house and then she slammed the door as soon as they entered. The monkey approached and hit the door severally till it went back. Their hearts were almost in their mouths. They were there in the jungle for years. Pinto was now 25 while Joe was 16. He could communicate with animals and most of them were his friends. At times, Lilo and Pinto would have to go deep into the jungle to call him home and would find him seated comfortably with some animals before him. It baffled her because she didn't even know what Joe would always say to them that would make them feel so comfortable around him. There was a time they even went back into the village after so many years but found no single soul, not even a soul in the dilapidated palace. One day, Pinto went to pick fruits, as usual, when she saw Lilo from afar running towards her. She immediately abandoned what she was doing and then halted him. He paused all of a sudden and started to twist his neck, pointing his head towards the direction of the house. She climbed him swiftly and they rode home, only to see some people already driving away in a truck, with Joe in chains at the back of the truck. Pinto jumped down all of a sudden and started to run after the truck, screaming Joe's name. Lilo too ran as fast as his legs could carry him, but the more they ran, the more the truck spared. Pinto! Pinto! Joe screamed, but Lilo and Pinto were so helpless. Pinto climbed Lilo again, and they ran and ran after them. But then a man peeped from the window, pointed a gun at Lilo, and then shot one of his legs. Lilo tumbled immediately, flinging Pinto aside. She became unconscious for about a few minutes, and as soon as she managed to open her eyes, Lilo was beside her with his cheek rubbing hers. Her eyes popped open all of a sudden, as soon as she remembered what had happened, and immediately her jaw dropped in awe. Lilo, she exclaimed, looking into his eyes. That gunshot, were you hit? She quizzed with eyes still glued to his and he nodded slowly, stretching forth his injured leg. Oh my God! Pinto exclaimed with hands covering her mouth. She gently grabbed his injured leg and looked closely at it. There was not much bleeding, but the bullet was still in there. She stood up and started to rub his head. Can you manage to get up? She asked, and he nodded sporadically again. He managed to stand up, standing on just three legs, while the shot leg was suspended in the air. You can do this, right? Pinto asked again, staring at him, and he gave a nod. Gently and slowly, they walked back home after spending more than two hours on the jungle road. As soon as they reached the living room, Lilo fell to the floor and started panting heavily. Pinto brought some water in a bowl and gave it to him, but he only took a few sips and then rested his head back on the floor. Gradually, Lilo started losing his strength. 
She rushed into the kitchen, brought out a knife and stood before Lilo, holding the knife in her right hand. When she was much younger and working in the palace, she used to see those guards extracting bullets from each other's wounds. She would pretend to be mopping the floor, but she saw all they were doing and how they successfully extracted bullets using sharp objects. Pinto moved closer to Lilo and then squatted before him. She shut his eyes using her left hand and slowly started to extract the bullet. She had never done this before in her entire life. That was her first time. He remained so calm and quiet at first, but as she began dipping in the knife, he let out a very loud scream with his head up. So loud that even the birds perched on the trees close by all flew away as soon as they heard his scream. But she didn't stop. All of a sudden, she pushed out the bullet, and as soon as she did, Lilo fell his head back on the floor with eyes closed and then slept off. I'm so sorry for this Lilo, Pinto said, wiping off tears from her face. She picked a few leaves, squeezed them, and then dropped the juice on the injury. She then went to get a few broad leaves and covered him with them. She was there on the floor for hours watching him sleep and at the same time thinking about Joe. I pray he's safe. She once muttered to herself. Later that night, she shut the door and windows, lit up the lamp, and then kept it beside Lilo to keep him warm. That night was the first cry she cried in the jungle ever since Grandma died. She needed to go in search of her brother to save him, but she didn't know how. She picked up the diamond from where she kept it, stared at it, and then gave it a kiss and kept it back where she had hidden it. If they had wanted the diamond, she would have given it to them in place of her brother. Ever since Dad abandoned them, Grandma, Lilo and Joe were the only family she had left. And now that Joe had been taken, she didn't even know how or where to go in search of him. She was awake all night, thinking of what to do. The following morning, as soon as Pinto woke up, she rushed out of bed and went straight to where Lilo was lying in the living room. He was just lying there, with a warm body and with eyes still shut. There was nothing in the house to eat, so she dashed into the bushes to pick fruits for Lilo and herself and then returned after a few minutes. But when she returned, Lilo's eyes were now opened, but he was unable to move his body. He tried communicating with her using his eyes, but she didn't understand what he was trying to say, and at that moment she thought he was trying to tell her that he wasn't okay. She abandoned the fruit she carried in a basket by the corner and then rushed to him. Are you okay? Pinto said, rubbing his forehead, but he was still moving his eyes sideways, trying to tell her something. As soon as she raised her head, she saw the shadow of a human standing right behind her. Pinto turned and saw a man pointing a gun at her. Freeze, your hands above your head. A middle-aged white man with a very long mustache said, staring at her as soon as he said that, with the gun still pointed directly at her. Immediately she heard that she threw her hands up in the air. Who, who are you? Pinto managed to ask. Does it matter? Well, if it must interest you, my name is Lauren and I work for people, not myself. Information reached my boss that there were some humans living in the jungle by God knows who. My boss said he was interested in having you being displayed in a museum in our city. Anyone who is interested in having you will pay a certain amount of money. After that, you're theirs. We already took your brother, he said. What? You have my brother? Pinto asked with popped eyes and he nodded. Just like that, she questioned, already so furious. Do you think we are a piece of art or something? She added. Not my fault. Wouldn't it be better than living here in the jungle, talking and laughing with animals every single day? This place is my home. Now go back and tell whoever sent you that I'm not interested, Pinto said, standing on her feet. I'm sorry, you have no choice. As a matter of fact, I'm not alone here. So just quietly move out if you don't want me to use force, he said, staring at her, and immediately she knew what she was into. Pinto turned and looked at Lilo, who sat there quietly with mouth agape. She then turned back, now facing the man. Please, can I pick something from my room? She asked nervously. Sure you can. After you, he said. He followed her to the bedroom. She picked up the diamond box, and as soon as she turned, he stood there staring at her. What's that? He quizzed, pointing at the diamond box. She looked at it and then at him. Nothing. It's just some personal stuff, Pinto said. Very well then. Now move, he said. As soon as they walked into the living room, Lilo managed to get up, and he attacked the man all of a sudden. He nodded the man so hard that his gun immediately fell from his hands. 
The man hit the back of his head on the wall behind him and fell to the floor. He then started to scream his colleague's name, and all of a sudden, the other man who had been outside came running in holding a gun. Freeze, he said to Pinto as soon as he stepped in, seeing his colleague on the floor. At this time, Lilo was already preparing to attack him also. The horse, careful the horse. The man on the floor let out, pointing at Lilo. Lilo approached him, standing like a human. And all of a sudden, the man shot him. Pinto screamed and ran to him, but he fell to the floor with eyes opened so wide. Lilo! She called in between sobs, but the men rushed to her, and she was taken away just like her brother. Chained and kept at the back of the truck with the diamond box in her hand after one of them tried opening it to no avail. She had hidden the key in her dreadlocked hair. She kept thinking about Lilo and cried her eyes out. Lilo had lost his life fighting for her. After almost 20 hours of driving with just water, they finally reached their destination. It was a very big building painted in white. Pinto was brought down from the back of the truck and one of them told her that they were there to see their boss, the one who wanted Joe and her. Thank goodness, at least I'll beg him with this diamond so he can free Joe and me, she muttered. They reached their boss's office but she was told he was busy and she was taken outside to sit on an abandoned chair while one of the men she arrived with stood beside her. Everyone passing turned, looking at her. Some would giggle, covering their mouths, while some continued staring till she was out of their sight. Yes, she had tangled hair, and her vital organs were covered with just a piece of cloth. Who wouldn't stare, seeing someone like her? Please, can I see my brother? Pinto asked the man. I don't know where he is, but my boss does. You can ask him when you see him, the man standing beside her said, looking away. After about an hour, they were told that their boss now wanted to see her. She was taken back into his office, and as soon as she saw him, she fell on her knees. Sir, please, this is a diamond, Pinto said, stretching forth the box. You can take it, just let my brother and me go. We are both orphans living in the jungle. We do not have anything or anyone. Please take it, she added. The man stood up from his chair and started to stare at her. He then started to walk towards her slowly, with eyes still glued to her. Pinto searched for the key in her tangled hair and then opened the box with it. The diamond sat there glittering as usual. As soon as the man who came with her saw it, his jaw immediately dropped in awe with his eyes popped. But their boss didn't even look at what she was showing him. His gaze was fixed on her. He stood before her with eyes still glued to her, and then he opened his mouth all of a sudden. Pinto! He called in exclamation. She was shocked and was going to ask him if he knew her when she suddenly had a replay in her head. She remembered the younger version of his face, and all of a sudden she called, Father, Zdrinia, and then withdrew the diamond. Pinto, he called again, hugging her so tight, but she pushed him aside. Where is my brother? She quizzed with a frowned face. What? He exclaimed, rushed back to his table, and then picked up his telephone, asking someone to come into his office right away. After a few seconds, the person arrived. You called, sir? The person said with hands behind him. That boy? Where is he? Father asked. Which, sir? Asked the person. The, the jungle boy, father said. He's been sold to those Indians, like you said, and he's been taken away, the person replied. What? Pinto asked in exclamation. Go. Go phone them to bring him back now, father said, almost screaming. Pinto raised her head and gave him an ugly stare. How long will it take before he's brought back, she asked, already fuming in anger. Maybe. Ten to twelve. Hours, dad said, stuttering, already feeling so uncomfortable. Until then, I will be waiting. If he isn't brought back by then, you will not believe what I'm capable of. Pinto said and walked out, going to sit where she had initially sat. But father hurried after her, trying to calm her down. Pinto, please forgive me. I never knew that the young lad was my son, he said. Hearing his voice again made her become more furious. How would you know when you abandoned us with grandma? Aren't you just ashamed of yourself? Do you know what we've been through? We couldn't even have the kind of life that we wanted, simply because grandma didn't even have enough money to take care of herself. Talk more of us. You abandoned us to die, and here you are living in wealth, she said, looking around. Even though I don't wish for this kind of wealth. You trade humans for money, she quizzed, staring at him. Pinto, it's not what you think, he said, looking away. Then it's what? 
I don't even want to have any business with you. All I need is my brother. I need to take him home, Pinto said. You will have your brother, but please find a place in your heart to forgive me. If you forgive me now, it will be easier for your brother too, he said, keeping an innocent face. There's no way I'm ever going to forgive you. Get that into your thick skull, she barked, locking stairs with him. He started to pace up and down with a hand on his waist, scratching his head with the other hand. And then a white woman with two children walked into the compound. As soon as they sighted Pinto from afar, they began to walk slowly to father, who was still standing confusedly. And then the woman hugged dad tightly, but her gaze was still fixed on Pinto. She then walked towards Pinto and turned around, now looking at dad. Where did you get this mad-looking woman from? she asked. Pinto was about to open her mouth to say something, but had to control herself. Dad turned slowly facing her. He rubbed his forehead and then opened his mouth. Louisa, that isn't a mad woman. That is my daughter Pinto, Dad said, and all of a sudden the woman's eyes popped open. What? Your daughter? One of those children? She quizzed and then burst into laughter, while her children too laughed in chorus. Louisa, why are you all laughing at her? She grew up in the jungle, that's why she's looking this way. You all should stop making a caricature of her, Dad said. What? She grew up in the jungle? One of the children asked with keen interest, and then approached Pinto. Do you know King Kong and Judge of the Jungle? He asked, but she looked away. If you know what is good for you, better run along to your mama before I whoop your ass, Pinto said to him in whispers. And then his eyes popped open with mouth agape. You'll whoop my ass? He questioned, looking into her eyes, and all of a sudden he gnashed his teeth. Last warning? she said in whispers again, and before she knew it, he kicked her leg so hard and then ran to his mom. Father and his wife were facing each other at this point, discussing in a very low tone. The other of their children, about 12 years old, ran back into their car, and Pinto saw him approaching from afar with a banana in his hand. She didn't even know he was coming to her. There was nothing those children did not subject her to. He stood before her and then stretched forth the banana. Um... Pin, teen, tin. He kept stuttering, looking into the air with a hand on his cheek. What's that your name again? He had the audacity to ask. Not again, Pinto muttered to herself. Ah, ah, that isn't the name Dad mentioned. What's your name? What's your name? He said again with a hand on his cheek. Pinto Pinta, his brother said aloud, laughing out so loud. Oh yeah, the jungle girl Pinto. The one before her said, and started laughing, but she looked at him and then looked away. Well, take this banana, he said, peeling it. Let me see you eat it, just like a monkey would do, pretty girl, he said, and he and his brother burst out laughing again. But she ignored and didn't utter a word. Take it, he said in a harsh tone, but she ignored still. All of a sudden, he dipped the banana into her mouth and started to force it in. Eat it just like a monkey, jungle girl, he repeated, grinning. Pinto grabbed his hand, looked into his eyes, and then smacked his right cheek. I can see your mama didn't teach you some manners, she said to him, and then he screamed with a hand on his cheek. Father and his mom turned immediately. Ethan, what's it? His mom questioned at the top of her voice, but the boy couldn't even utter a word. He was just crying, pointed at Pinto's hand, and then at his face. What? What did you do to my child, you mad lady? She questioned, coming to fight Pinto, but Dad immediately grabbed her. Louisa, please, no, Dad said, still holding her. Leave me alone. Let me beat the hell out of her. How dare you touch my child with those stinking hands of yours? She thundered, but Pinto sat there looking at her, expecting her next action. She withdrew herself from Dad all of a sudden, grabbed her children's hands, and then they all walked to the car, murmuring as they left, and then drove off. Dad walked up to Pinto and then squatted before her. Pinto, Ethan is your brother, he said. She looked him in the eyes. I give you some hours from now to provide my brother, Pinto said, and then looked away. He let out a deep sigh and then left for his office. After a few minutes, a young lady brought a tray of food and dropped it before Pinto, but she told her she didn't want anything. Come on, you need to eat something, she said, stroking Pinto's hair, and then Pinto let out a smile. Thank you, but I don't want anything, she said. The young lady tried talking to her, but Pinto wasn't just interested in all she had to say. 
All she wanted was Joe, her brother. Later that day, after they had closed, Dad wanted Pinto to go home with him to pass the night, but she blatantly refused. She sat where she was still sitting till late in the night. Dad couldn't leave. At a point, he offered her his jacket to wear, but she refused to take it after she refused to go inside the office with him. The next morning very early, a man drove in high speed into the compound, which made Dad run out of his office. It was one of his workers. Good morning, sir, he said as soon as he walked up to Dad. Yes, what is it? Dad quizzed curiously. The jungle boy, sir, their ship capsized on their way to India. No one survived, sir, he said with hands behind him. What? Pinto exclaimed, walked quietly into Dad's office, leaving them outside. She had sighted a lighter on Dad's table the previous day. She went, picked it up, and then lit a few papers up in his office, and then she walked back out. Thank you very much for watching. We have one more amazing episode to go. If you've enjoyed the story so far, please drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the bell notification so you won't miss any updates. Thank you, and remember, we love you.